Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 7639 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a revised business programme for today. I would ask any member who objects to say so now, and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 7639. Formally moved. Thank you very much. No member has asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 7639 is agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. And the next item of business is topical questions. And we start with question number one from Claire Hockey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support it will give to families of children who died at the Smilam Park Orphanage in Lanark. Minister Mark MacDonald. Uh, the information that has been disclosed about the unmarked grave at St Mary's Cemetery, Lanark, where it has been reported that the children from Smilam Park Orphanage were buried, uh, will of course be of deep concern to many individuals and particularly the families uh, of those who are affected. Uh, these are clearly matters of great public concern and I would like to set out to Parliament the steps that are being taken to address these issues. The Crown Office and Police Scotland have issued a joint statement this morning. The Crown Office have stated that, as matters stand, based on the information currently available, there is no evidence that a crime has been committed or that any deaths require to be investigated. But that position will be kept under review. Any allegations of criminality will be thoroughly and sensitively investigated. Similarly, it will be for the Child Abuse Inquiry to consider this new information alongside the evidence they already have and the witness sessions they have arranged to help them deliver the terms of their remit. Any action for the Scottish Government could only follow from proper consideration through those channels first. Families who have been affected by these reports are encouraged to seek support through a range of services supported by the Scottish Government, services currently available from a range of bereavement services such as Cruise Bereavement Care Scotland, the Compassionate Friends and Petal. Any survivors who have been affected by these reports can also find support at Future Pathways, the Scottish Government funded support service available to all survivors of abuse suffered whilst in care in Scotland. Thank you. Claire Hockey. I appreciate the Minister's answer and I hope that families will take some comfort in the steps that are now being taken to establish the circumstances around these burials. It's also reassuring to note the support services available to anyone affected. Can the Minister confirm that the Burial and Cremation Scotland Act passed by this Parliament last year extends legislation over recording burials to include private sites and that this cons consistency will prevent a situation such as has been discovered at Smilam Park from happening in future? Minister. I think um, Claire Hockey highlights an important point that, that needs to be uh, put out there that um, in relation to uh, the unmarked graves um, that were uh, reported at St Mary's, uh, the legislation that would have applied at the time would have been the Burial Grounds Scotland Act 1855, uh, but this applied only to local authority burial uh, authorities. Uh, private burial authorities uh, tended to follow the legislation voluntarily and there was no legal requirement for them to do so, nor to maintain a register of burials. The 2016 Burial and Cremation Act, to which Claire Hockey refers, introduces a legal requirement for every burial authority, including private burial authorities, to prepare and maintain a register of burials for each burial ground they operate. While Section 10 of the Act has not yet come into force uh, because it requires regulations to be made which will specify the information which must be recorded in the register, the Burial Regulations Working Group has been set up and will be involved in creating draft regulations for consultation before the regulations are laid in Parliament. In the meantime, local authorities do continue to be subject to the same requirements and duties to register burials. Claire Hockey. Thank you. And, and finally, Minister, what continuing oversight does the Scottish Government have over recording burials in light of the Burial and Cremation Scotland Act 2016? And when does the Government intend to bring forward its plans for an inspector of burials and further provisions to improve burial ground management regulations? Minister. Uh, the Burial and Cremation Scotland Act uh, gives the Minister the power to appoint an inspector of burials as Clare Hockey uh, identifies. We currently have an in inspector of cremation and an inspector of funeral directors and we will bring forward um, plans in relation to the inspector of burials in due course. Um, the inspector will also have the power to make recommendations and report burial authorities uh, which are not complying with the legislation to Scottish ministers. And question number two, Alex Cole-Hamilton. 
Minister, do you ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to reduce congestion on the approaches to the Queen's Ferry crossing? Minister Hamza Yusuf. The first days of operation of the Queen's Ferry crossing have resulted in increased traffic congestion, including outside of peak hours, most notice, noticeably last Sunday. While this is typical of initial traffic patterns seen in our newly opened major bridges, the following steps are being taken to reduce this congestion. Fixed message signs have been deployed in the slip roads onto the Queensferry crossing at either end to remind drivers to use the full length of the slip uh, to merge uh, into the main traffic stream. An additional variable message sign has also been positioned on the Queensferry Junction northbound slip, advising of the same. This is being reinforced by Traffic Scotland and social media. Uh, the consideration is also being given to raising the speed limit from 40 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour as soon as the central reserve barrier installation has been completed and it is safe to do so. I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for his reply. I'm very proud to have the Queen's Ferry crossing in my constituency and I congratulate those who built it. But while I share his delight at the improving picture witness this morning and yesterday, my constituents should not have to endure another weekend such as the one we've just had, with many waiting hours in traffic and some even losing income. Representatives from Transport Scotland said in the media over the weekend that this spike was anticipated. Can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary if any other spikes are expected and what efforts are being made to encourage commuters to use public transports and cycle routes in an effort to reduce congestion across the board? Minister. Can I thank uh, Alex Cole Hamilton uh, for the constructive approach that uh, he's taken with me? Uh, he contacted me over the weekend on behalf of his constituents to say that, uh, to reiterate that they were feeling frustration, and I uh, accept that that frustration, of course, would be borne out by drivers crossing the Queen's Ferry crossing, particularly uh, over Sunday, which I would just like to put some context around. There was events taking place on Sunday, whether it was Pedal for Scotland, the Antiques Fair at Ingolston, that may have added to that. But what we're also seeing is some uh, element of tourist traffic still going across the bridge, looping back round and, and going round mm -hmm. uh, a number of times. Uh, and that is understandable. We want people to enjoy uh, the Queen's Ferry crossing. But uh, in, in regards to anticipation, what I have said to my Transport Scotland officials is that we know that there's some groups who have put off coming to the Queen's Ferry crossing for the first couple of weeks who will come later on because they think it might have quietened down. Uh, we're confident with the variable messaging sign that we've put in, signs that we've put in place, as well as the other measures, measures that we've taken, that we are seeing an improving picture. Uh, the reports from the Monday a.m. peak, Monday p.m. peak and the Tuesday a.m. peak of this week uh, have shown fewer uh, delays and a much reduced delay time uh, as well. I will continue to monitor that and ensure that if the member wants briefing from Transport Scotland throughout this week, including what will happen at this weekend in anticipation of this weekend, I'll be more than happy to provide that. Alice Paul Hamilton. I'm thankful for that response. I suggested over the weekend that the fourth road bridge might be used as a, res a release valve during the first phase to avoid the kind of congestion that we saw over the weekend. This was a, claim, uh, a request supported by the RAC. Would it be possible to allow buses and taxis to use the fourth road bridge now, reopen the Eklund roundabout for local access, and defer some of the repairs and roadworks on the fourth road bridge until the better weather in the spring, so that we can have the uh, fourth road bridge as a backup option in case we encounter further spikes in the congestion we saw in these early days? Minister. As I said to the member, we are seeing an improving picture. So I think it's important that we see how this week progresses and indeed the weekend where there may well be a spike in, in, in tourist traffic. So let's see that if the picture is improving, that the delays are reducing because of the actions that we've taken and Transport Scotland have taken, uh, then I think we continue to monitor what other things can be done, for example, increasing the speed limit. <laughs> there are difficulties in the suggestion uh, that he makes around the fourth road bridge. Uh, what we committed to do was ensure that the Queen's Ferry crossing and the fourth road bridge as a public transport corridor were op open and operational at the earliest opportunity. So deferring them is not uh, an option that I would like to do, though I understand why he makes that suggestion. Uh, the works at the north end of the FRB are likely to take around six weeks. However, we're hopeful that the contractor FCBC uh, can complete them uh, closer to the four week uh, period. Uh, weather will, uh, of course, uh, influence uh, whether or not that can be completed in that time. But there, are a, there is a lot of work that has been done, necessary to be done in terms of alignment uh, and to tie in uh, the North End, which I think is, is vital. And I want the aim of that uh, for all concerned is to achieve the full operating status of both Queen's Ferry Crossing and indeed of FRB as soon as possible. So let's see how the week progresses. I'll keep the member updated. At any point, he feels his constituents in particular uh, are feeling uh, frustrated at the length of delays. Uh, then, of course, we are looking at what other options uh, can be explored. Liz Smith. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, Minister, obviously this uh, is in a very important and uh, absolutely iconic bridge, which I think we all uh, take great pride in. But there are serious issues here. And since 2006-07, a great deal of effort has gone into the Scottish Government in terms of the evidence about the traffic flow for the two bridges. Can I ask whether the Minister is entirely satisfied that the evidence on which the Scottish Government has based its decisions is accurate, and does the Scottish Government have any plans to review that so that we can address the problems that we've had over this past week? Minister. What I would say to the member is that, of course, traffic modelling uh, takes place uh, on any infrastructure project uh, that we look to commit to. Uh, there was an expectation, of course, that there would be increased tourist traffic and increased interest, particularly in the first week, first fortnight. And I would suspect that we'll continue to see, even on the weekends in particular, a number of groups, be they motorcycle groups, vintage vehicle groups, as we've seen uh, many other groups wanting to come uh, and enjoy the experience of the Queen's Ferry Crossing. Uh, what we are looking to do uh, is to see what more we can do to alleviate some of that pressure. And it is working. The peak, Monday AM peak, Monday PM peak, this morning's AM peak, have seen, uh, uh, congestion, has seen congestion uh, reduce. So the actions we are taking uh, is working. In terms of modelling and future modelling, of course I'll always happily look at whether modelling can be done better and work, work with the, the experts in that regard. Uh, I think that's a sensible thing to do. I know it's something we're doing, for example, for the Borders Railway, of course a completely different piece of uh, infrastructure, but nonetheless people asked us to look at the modelling uh, and where it's sensible to review that, uh, we most certainly will. But this is not an issue around modelling. This is an issue uh, around uh, ensuring that we can do, do everything in our powers to reduce the congestion uh, on the Queen's Ferry Crossing. Alec Rowley. Presiding officer, I welcome uh, what the Transport Minister has to say. I also wrote to him regarding concerns. Um, it wasn't just the weekend. The traffic was tailed right back up the M90 to Hobbeath for long periods of time last week, which would not be acceptable if it continued. Uh, so I welcome the guarantee. I think if he can keep all members uh, up to date on what progress has been made on both sides. It is a six lane bridge after all, and there will be options that will be available, but hopefully, hopefully it's just people uh, wanting to see this new, amazing, wonderful bridge, and we get past this period in time. But if we don't, then action needs to be taken, and that's the assurance we need. Minister. Yes, I'm absolutely happy to give Alec Rowley uh, that, that assurance. I think members should be kept up to date, and I'll endeavour for the members that have asked questions and want to be kept up to date in terms of traffic flows, particularly during the peak times. <coughs> I will look to do that, including, of course, out of peak times, particularly at the weekend, uh, as we saw congestion on the Sunday last week. If we continue to see that, I will, I will do what I can. It's in our powers uh, to alleviate some of that congestion. But he will get my absolute assurance that myself, Transport Scotland, the contractors, the operating company, we're absolutely working hand-in-hand uh, hand here to ensure that anybody who's looking to cross over that bridge has a seamless uh, uh, journey and experience and gets to enjoy what is a, an iconic feat of engineering that all of us, rightly, across this chamber are very proud of. Mark Ruskell. Thank you. Um, I think it was Alex Cole Hamilton's predecessor, Margaret Smith, who in 2010 warned that there would be an absolute clamour for both bridges to be open to general traffic once the Queens, Queensferry crossing was built and open, and that if delivered, this would uh, lead to disastrous levels of traffic growth. So does the Cabinet Secretary agree with Margaret Smith's assessment from 2010? And alongside the welcome commitments given already to grow active travel on the Forth Road Bridge, will the Scottish Government be giving uh, support to increase traffic on the Forth Rail Bridge? Minister. We have a commitment in the government uh, to, of course, uh, increase the levels of a number of people on public transport, whether that's on our buses, whether that's on our railways. Uh, that is something, as Transport Minister, I uh, have said from day one uh, on the job. And, of course, uh, once we do the work on the FRB, uh, on the Fourth Road Bridge, uh, of course, that will, I think, make public transport a more attractive option, with buses uh, in particular. Now, uh, that is something that we all have a duty to do across this chamber uh, to promote. I'll ensure that the messaging around that uh, is uh, we, we have a look at that again, we review that again to ensure that it uh, is as powerful as possible. But I think there's a great opportunity, not just uh, for those that are crossing in the motor car, but absolutely to say that public transport, getting access to the fourth road bridge, once, it's, uh, once the work is done in four to six weeks, uh, making public transport a more attractive option uh, is something that I'm delighted, uh, absolutely delighted about. And in terms of the rail bridge, uh, we'll continue to do what we can to increase patronage on the railways uh, as well. And finally, Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. 
Um, the, the new bridge is obviously of critical importance for uh, con uh, my constituents in Edinburgh South, as it is for people across Edinburgh, Fife and the whole of Scotland. Uh, the Minister raised in a previous answer the modelling that went into this. Now, I understand that a number of the traffic management features are not yet operational in connection to the bridge. Can the Minister please explain what impact uh, their, uh, the, 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 the not having those open made in terms of the modelling assessment? And indeed, while he mentions that the spike was anticipated, was the level of the spike in line with the anticipated uh, level of traffic, or has it exceeded it? Minister. I'll try to get the member, obviously, the specifics in our own, uh, the modelling as, as best I can uh, in written form. But what I would say is, of course, <laughs> uh, modelling and forecasting, we try to do to the best uh, of the ability of the, uh, the expertise uh, that we have in Transport Scotland. Uh, there are some things, for example, we had over the Sunday, uh, you know, vintage vehicles choosing that Sunday in particular to go across. We had motorcycle uh, uh, groups uh, choosing to go across. We had cars displaying uh, large flags in, in a parade uh, type of fashion, choosing to go across on the Sunday. Uh, there is only so much modelling that, that you can do to capture uh, all of that. So in terms of my answer to Liz Smith's uh, question, uh, where we can review that, where we can look at that uh, to, to make it uh, even more accurate than, of course, we will. But it was anticipated that in the first few weeks uh, of the Queensferry crossing be open, that there will be a surge in traffic. Now, that is not just for, uh, that is not unique to Scotland, of course. If you look at any uh, new bridge or new infrastructure opening across the world, there is a spike uh, in traffic, and we are doing everything we can to manage that. But where we can do more, uh, we certainly will do more. We're starting to see the positive <coughs> results of that. And the Monday AM peak, Monday PM peak, the Tuesday AM peak, as I have said uh, throughout my uh, answering to questions, uh, has seen reduction uh, in that congestion, and we'll see how the rest of the week progresses. And if we can do more, uh, we most certainly will explore all the options. Thank you very much. That concludes topical questions.